So you think you know mushroom soup? Well, this one is extra special, beautiful Asian mushrooms, a tangy and sour Chinese style soup and dumplings. Can't go wrong. This is my mushroom and dumpling hot and sour soup. So one of the things that makes it very tempting to order in Chinese is that it's kind of really quick and not much effort. Well, can I say this soup is quick and not much effort and so much quicker than getting takeaway and a little bit more virtuous. So let's get on with the mushrooms first of all. I'm using a mix of Asian mushrooms here. Now I'm really lucky, I live in Thailand, in Bangkok, where getting a whole bunch of different mushrooms and Asian mushrooms is very cheap. And I understand that not all of you are in that kind of situation and mushrooms can be expensive. So I've got some tips on how you can do this on a budget. Let's go through the mushrooms first of all. So I'm starting off with some fresh shiitake mushrooms. Now what you would do here, if you can't get a hold of fresh shiitake mushrooms or they're too expensive, is use the dried version. So the dried version, you just need to soak in some hot water and then they're good to go. And you can use that soaking liquid as well because it's got lots of flavor in the soup. So that's your option for the shiitakes. Now I like to take the stem out here because the shiitake stem always seems to be quite tough and firm. It doesn't really soften up. So I take those out and then you just want to slice them. The other mushroom I've got here are wood ear mushrooms. So these guys kind of, well, you know, they have that kind of ear shape. I guess that's why, where they get their name from. But they have a very firm, crunchy texture. And again, you can get these dried. So these are the dried version here. And if you soak them in some water, they fluff up into these big little ears, just the same as these. Now to prepare these, you want to take out the kind of hard, firm stem part so that you've just left with the ears, and then finally slice. Now, these ones are shimji mushrooms, and just take the stem off the bottom. They're done. And now we have some oyster mushrooms, which in Thailand we call het nang pha, which means angel mushroom, which I just always like. It's a happy mushroom. Not like the happy mushroom, as in the happy, happy mushrooms. But anyway, it's a nice sounding mushroom. <laughs> For these ones, you just want to trim off the firm and then just tear them apart. And now I've also got some enoki mushrooms here, but they are very delicate and I'm just going to leave them until right at the end and pop them in at the last minute. Okay, so that's pretty much the hardest part of the recipe, which is not very hard. Uh, now we want to get all of these mushrooms, except the enoki, into a big saucepan. And I'm going to add in some shredded carrot here as well. I love shredded carrot in a recipe because you can buy it already shredded from a supermarket these days and this makes it so much easier. Now add in some vegetable stock. And then put the heat on, get that starting to simmer. And while that's happening, I'm going to add in some seasoning. So I've got some soy sauce here, some dark soy sauce. That's going to give us the characteristic deep dark color that you get with a Chinese hot and sour soup. And then vinegar. So the traditional ingredient here would be Chinese black vinegar. Now I find that difficult to get a hold of, so you guys probably do too. So I'm just using a white vinegar here. And the vinegar really is the flavor that you want here. You want at the end of the soup to kind of have a tangy, which is the sour, tangy sour flavor, and then a hit of some pepper, which is the hot that's coming a bit later. Now when the soup starts to bubble, I'm going to add in my corn flour. It's been mixed with a little bit of water. And one of the characteristics of this soup is that it has a very thick and I find very comforting kind of texture. And a little bit kind of glossy and silky as well. I just let that simmer for a couple of minutes. I want all those flavors to kind of develop in there and all those mushrooms to give off their beautiful mushroomy flavor. Now my soup's looking good. I'm gonna add in a few last minute additions and one is some tofu, totally optional. If you don't like it, you can leave it out. I happen to love it. This is a medium firm tofu. Just wanna slice it into chunks. Pop that into the soup. Now I'm going to get some dumplings going here as well. And in the spirit of doing things quickly and easily, I'm going to use some frozen dumplings. 
These happen to be shiitake mushroom dumplings, which is great. Now, a lot of you have asked me many times when I'm making dumplings to put in soups, why I don't just cook the dumpling in the soup. Well, the dumpling itself comes coated in a little bit, you know, there's always a little bit of flour or starch on the outside. And I just find that it can kind of alter the texture or flavor of the soup. So I prefer to cook my dumplings separately whenever I'm putting them in a soup. Now, just before I think those dumplings are ready, I'm gonna grab my enoki mushrooms and tear them into my soup. Now, white pepper is the way you wanna go here and you want quite a bit in here. And a last minute little dash of flavor, some sesame oil. I love that flavor. That tangy sourness, which is that main characteristic of a hot and sour soup, is so delightful. I love it. And then that little hit of pepper at the end. Mm, so good. And then we are good to go, my friends. So we want a nice ladle full of our thick, beautiful, comforting soup. these dumplings and then finally just a little sprinkling of spring onion now that is done and dusted in like 15 minutes could not be quicker let's have a look mm. those beautiful mushrooms ah that flavor so earthy and kind of comforting and all the good things. It's like getting a big hug. Mm. And dumplings make everything taste better, of course. <laughs> mm. This really is one feel good dinner. Yum. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one, and that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks, guys.